Hi everyone. Um, I had somebody ask me a question on Instagram that I was going to put on the Satori show tonight, but then thought if I do it here, um, it can get to a lot more people, help a lot more people. And it could, um, you know, I could go into it a little bit deeper, a little bit further. So here it is. <laughs> um, so this person asked me, they said that they're talent, they feel they're talented they can do readings, that they're accurate, and they're getting a lot of really good feedback about their own skills and abilities. And they're like, well, what do I do with that? So I thought I would share my own story um, on the path that I took and um, see what resonates with you if you're in this also in, in the same boat, because I know that a lot of divine feminines are really coming into their power right now. And by that, I mean that they are realizing their true potential and they're embracing their gifts and they're really becoming like they're becoming queens basically if you know the tarot they're becoming the empress so or they've already been the empress now they're just kind of taking the sheet off and revealing it and they're and they're wanting to leave their jobs um to kind of make a career out of of this i thought i'd add real quick here too that I actually came from a corporate background. I was a sales and marketing um, uh, assistant, uh, executive secretary for many years, marketing. Um, and I eventually became a community relations director for retirement living. So basically, probably 20 some years of experience in the corporate world. If you would have told me that I'd be doing this right now, uh, I would have laughed. I would have laughed really hard. <laughs> So, uh, what I did when I realized that this is what I wanted to do is very much like you guys are probably already doing. I did a lot of um, tapping into my intuition for people for free, just friends, family, whoever would listen. <laughs> and I would see how accurate I am. You know, you want to test it out. And <clears throat> then from there, uh, I really felt like really called to do it. So I went to, I was in Granbury, Texas. Actually, okay, let me back up. All right. So this is the story <laughs> of how, of how I came to be doing what I'm doing. So I'd always been pretty intuitive. I was, they called me the Pied Piper as a kid. I had animals follow me everywhere and I always understood what they were feeling and thinking and everything. And I thought everybody did. And so I didn't know why people were so mean to animals because I was like, well, don't you, don't you, don't you understand what they're saying? I was like looking at them like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> so um, I always had that, but didn't realize it was anything special and um, was very involved with animals my whole life. Then um, when I got older, I went through a bout of Christianity, <laughs> really extreme Christianity. It was non-denominational, but it was very strict. I pretty much lived like a nun for three years. It was pretty intense. And um, in, within that belief system, I was not allowed to do psychic readings or even be psychic. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't something that was approved of uh, in my teachings. So I acted like it wasn't there. I tried to block it out. <laughs> and the whole concept kind of scared me, you know, thinking of trying to think of tapping into the other world was was pretty frightening for me. And I, um, yeah, I was, I was a really bad Bible thumper. If you guys know, knew me back then, you'd be so surprised because I was like really preaching it to everybody I knew. And I even got kicked out of my house, uh, out of my uncle's house because they didn't want me there anymore because I was um, making everybody feel uncomfortable and judged. <laughs> so, uh, um, so basically, I, I had this very loving woman who kind of would give me massages on a regular basis. And she kind of opened my mind up to taking responsibility for myself. And she helped me to like, instead of judging other people, she would always put it back on me and show me how I was being the same thing that I was accusing other people of being. And that really helped me learn to take personal responsibility, which gave me a lot of freedom. And it gave me, I also saw that she was so, so loving and so accepting of just about any idea, you know, she was just wide open and, and just so incredibly loving. And she talked to angels and things. And I thought, I want to be like her. 
Like, I want people to feel the same thing with me as I feel with her, just completely at peace and comfortable, you know, and she was like home to me. And I, um, you know, it took a couple years to break me of that really strict black and white mentality. And then I started to kind of open up my mind to other things, other things being possible, being even being able to read other books other than the Bible was a big deal. Um, and I read Eckhart Tolle's book when I was really feeling it. She she was like, you know what, Amy, I think you're ready for Eckhart Tolle's book, A New Earth. And she wasn't going to give that book to me until she knew I was I was ready to really look at myself. Um, so that book really opened me up and I had, I actually, within seven days of reading it, had an enlightenment experience for six months. I was actually enlightened and didn't use thinking anymore for six months. I was just living on pure instinct and energy. And I was like a walking ball of Jesus love. <laughs> so instead of like reading and preaching the Bible, I like was the Bible. I was the walking Bible and there was no judgment and there was no Bible thumping or no verses and, and none of that. I was just living that Christ consciousness energy um, as a being. Uh, and it was incredible. People would come to me and they would cry and, and they would feel deeply touched by anything that came out of my mouth. And it wasn't stuff that I was even thinking of saying. I just, it would just come out and it'd be exactly what they needed to hear. It was really amazing. So that went, went on for like six months. Um, so I have a deep, profound experience and knowledge of having been enlightened. I believe I still am enlightened. Um, only I have I have made myself be more uh, relatable to people <laughs> by being because I couldn't um, I've enlightened twice uh, or had like when it's like you're in a box of it and it's just like you go from the top to the bottom to the top to the bottom you can go anywhere in that box so I've been like peaked at the top uh, a couple times the second time I couldn't even talk um, for a few days anywho um, and that's also how I came to realize who my twin flame was too by the way um, because we both went through the enlightened experience twice um, and at the same time, the second time, probably the first time also, but we never did talk about dates about that. But um, <clears throat> so after that, um, I started to learn Qigong, an energy healing modality, and I really didn't believe in it. People were, I thought people were humoring me when they would say that I did such an amazing thing for them and I healed them and all this. I would just kind of roll my eyes, whatever. Um and so years went by after I even had studied those levels of Qigong and I didn't continue to do it or anything. Then I went through a divorce and um, went to stay with a friend of mine who was a naturopath. She taught me how to do reflexology. And then she and she was certified as a teacher so she could do that. And she had me start to work on her um, clients and and she had me doing some of the, I would do Qigong work while I was doing reflexology, like at the same time my intuition would flow while I was doing that work. And people, again, would cry and feel deeply touched by the things that I came up with. And so it started to be a hit. And she she was like, oh, well, we could be business partners and this could be a really great thing. And because I was in the middle of a divorce, um, back in Texas, and this was in New Mexico, um, I ended up going back to Texas and for divorce proceedings. And some people back home in Texas had heard about what I was doing, what I had been doing out at the clinic at my friend's place. And so they invited me to take a part-time job there as a juicer. <laughs> I was a juicer. And, um, and then the other half of the time I got like one day as a pr practitioner and I could schedule appointments on that one day and they just like rotated somebody every day. And so, um, I had to charge the rest of somebody as someone else. And it was really intimidating. I was like a hundred dollars an hour. Oh my gosh, you know, I can't charge that. And they were like, you have to charge the rest as, as all of us. So, um, I got past my insecurity about that and I, and I started to charge, and then I gathered testimonials. Then I had a, a website. I put the testimonials on the website. My confidence grew with the more people that um, that I touched, and the more people were healed by you know healed themselves really by my placebo is the way I like to put it. So you guys feel empowered. Um, and it's like 
I just started to build some momentum there. And then I got invited to a psychic fair. So then I went to a psychic fair and I did readings there and that went really well. Um, and then I found a little coffee shop in the square in Granbury. It's the cutest little town in Texas. If you haven't been, you got to go at Christmas time. It's unbelievably cute. So I was right on the square and I found this call, this place called the Paradise Bistro Cafe. Um, I think that's the correct name. But Paradise Bistro is what I used to call it. And they told me that I could do readings in there once a week and put up flyers like um, advertising that I'm going to be doing free readings. So I started doing, I think it was on Fridays, I would go in for like a couple of hours and just hang out with a little, I had this little sign, there's a picture of it on Instagram, <clears throat> but I had this little sign that said free readings, and then I had a little tip jar, and then I had my flowers, the same flowers I have today, if you ever visit me at the Lighthouse Bookstore, those are the same flowers. So basically, people would just, you know, have readings, and they would tip me, and um, that's how I started to make a little bit of money at it, and be a practitioner at it and then get the word out with the um, psychic readings and all of that in all areas started to take off it all started to to do really well and then um but i still wasn't um i still wasn't completely like on my own as a reader i just kind of you don't you want to have a part-time job <clears throat> because it'll take the angst away it'll take the anxiety away you got to be able to pay your bills so don't be don't do something silly and just you know, not have your own back that way. Um, save your money and and get a part time job. Do this on the side and build up your skills and abilities, and your name and and your website. Get a website for sure. There's free websites out there. Um, I use Squarespace. I really like it. It's I like how it's organized and that they kind of take care of everything. So basically um after i was done with the divorce i was all final and i had gained in popularity and was doing really well um i got an intuitive message that i was um, being encouraged to come out to boulder and i didn't know anybody here or why i was supposed to come here i thought it was a really crazy idea but at the same time i resonated with this place even though i'd never been here and didn't know anybody here or anything um, I just thought, okay, and I thought I was going to be working for this spiritual teacher that was out here at that time. And so his higher self had been talking to me, kind of telling, encouraging me to come out here. So I listened, and I dropped everything, and I came out here. And when I got here, um, the place that I was going to stay actually fell through because, well, it didn't really fall through. They would have had me, but um, it smelled really bad. <laughs> <laughs> it smelled really, really bad. And so I couldn't stay there. And so I had to start looking for another place. And I just kept praying, like, thank you so much for all the options. Thank you so much for all the options. Even though I was pretty, pretty horrified <laughs> to find myself in that situation. Um, so then I thought, okay, well, and right after those prayers, like within like hours, no, it was the next morning, I think I woke up and there were like six or seven options of places to live. And I basically just had enough money to, I just had like enough to put down on an apartment and get going. That was, that was it though. I mean, and maybe buy groceries for a little bit, a couple of weeks or something. So I had very little money at that time and, um, and I had everything I had squeezed into the back of my Subaru. <laughs> so I sold a lot of things and gave a lot of things away to come out here and do this. <clears throat> Knowing nothing or where I was going or anything. <laughs> Total leap of faith, total blind leap of faith, and just listening to my intuition. So I got here, and believe it or not, I end up renting an apartment, um, or renting not even an apartment. It was a room in somebody's home, and that woman who rented me a room ended up knowing the spiritual teacher that I was supposed to work for, that I thought I was going to be working for, and she knew all his staff, all his followers, like everything, I thought wow, this is meant to be, this is crazy, right? So, and then I start going to his parties and I um, become friends with, you know, his girlfriend and everybody on staff. And, you know, we all had a good time together, but still like no opportunity ar arose and nothing happened. And so I got a job at a, um, at a hardware place. <laughs> I did, I got a job 
at a hardware place. And the only thing, the only reason I did that, I told myself I'd never, ever work retail because I can't stand work, like being on my feet all day. But this was a place that me and my ex-husband frequented all the time. And I felt really comfortable there. We went and I, and I'm really into like design and home improvement and all that stuff. So I thought at least I could be comfortable there and it could be kind of fun to learn how to like work on my own stuff, you know, and not necessarily need a guy, but like be able to do my own, um, I don't know, you know, all that, all that guy stuff, (laughs) all that home stuff. And, um, so it was a really incredible experience. I loved working there. The people there were so cool. Um, ended up meeting a soulmate and a soul flame there. So that was interesting. Um, didn't know what they were at the time. And so then, um, I had a friend of mine who wasn't even an intuitive or anything. She just called me randomly and she said, you need to, you need to go down to the lighthouse bookstore. They have psychics there. And I said, yeah, I'll I'll make it down there sometime and check it out. And she goes, no, I really feel like you need to go down today. So I go down there and uh, I go down the stairs. It's in a basement of Ben and Jerry's. (laughs) And I go down there and the manager thinks I'm somebody else. And I arrived. So I arrived at the perfect time and she thought of somebody else. And she did this great interview and then hired me. And there wasn't a position open as a reader yet. But um you know, as time went by, as they needed a substitute, I was able to substitute. And then um, she gave me a shot uh, for a couple, a uh, couple times and, and uh, I did really well. So she and, and the owner um, decided that the next time that the weekend slot was open, that I would get it. So that was really like an, an honor for them to believe in me like that. And I was so excited. And so that opportunity came and they made me their weekend reader. So I'm there Thursday through Saturdays now. And basically, um, that really got helped get the name out a lot too. And then every, then I got, I had a day when I was, you know, a lot of people, they all want to know about love and work and all those big subjects. But one day there was a Saturday, I think it was where I got like 22 readings in the day. And I was just inundated with everybody wanting to know who, like, their true love was. And I was just like, what the heck? And it just seemed to be such an obvious thing. And, and I just felt into it. And they're like, no, this is your thing. This is, this is, your, this is what you're going to do. I was like, well, I love the subject of love. <laughs> this is pretty awesome. And then around that time, I actually met my twin flame. And so I learned all about it. I studied about it and everything. And... um I don't know. Then it started to become my thing. And then I had a friend of mine that I'd been friends with for a really long time who was a a producer at one point, um, who's been a producer on several shows. He uh, contacted me and said that he thought that I was ready for a for a podcast and he would be, you know, he would produce it. And so he actually did that for free, which was really amazing. And so we started a podcast and I just I just told him, yeah, it's, it's probably going to talk about fairies and leprechauns and aliens. And sometimes I don't have a filter on my mouth and I don't know how to say certain things sometimes because I had a stroke years ago, a little mini stroke. So sometimes I'm like, uh, I don't know. Uh. So, but he was just like, well, and then I was also like, okay, so I'm going to get chastised also by, you know, um, people who were like I was. <laughs> So I was like, oh, I don't want to be out there. But at the same time, a part of me knew, like, I knew I was a light worker. I've been through hell and back. And when you can buoy up like that from the depths of of the worst things you can possibly go through in life, and you can come out of it with a really good attitude and pretty pretty much pretty happy, <laughs> um, then you got something other people could definitely use. So that's probably you guys. And um, those are earth angels or light workers and star seeds. I mean, there are so many different categories, whatever you want to name them, but basically people who, people who made it through some pretty tough stuff and, and became, um, you know, pretty, pretty tough as a result and, and resilient and they didn't become callous. They became like lighthearted and, and good humored. So those are the best. Those are the best that keep, you know, especially those who have, who are pure of heart and pure of intention or as pure as you can, as you can get. Anyway, everybody's got their motivations and things. And obviously I want to make a living at this. So 
Um, I am doing this for money. But and as you guys are wanting to, too, which I don't think there's anything wrong with that either. There's some people believe you should be doing this kind of stuff for free. But I, I think that there should be an exchange. And that's just, you know, why not flourish doing what you really love doing and being yourself? I think that's a beautiful thing. So anyway, um, yeah, everything started taking off with the podcast and it just has been building from there. So I guess if. You know, obviously you guys are not going to go down the same path. You're not going to be led down to the Lighthouse Bookstore. You're not going to, you know, don't even attempt to follow my footsteps because you won't be able to repeat the exact same thing I did. But just know, like, I had a really good attitude when I ended up not working for that spiritual teacher. I was like, oh, okay, well, that didn't, that's not happening. So I guess, you know, we go on to plan B. Plan B could be even better. Plan B turned out to be the jackpot. You know, it, I was so grateful so glad I ended, didn't end up working for him um, because now it just doesn't resonate for me at all. And I do my own thing and I'm totally in my power and I'm feeling awesome about it. And just I don't regret it one bit. It's It was um, one of the best things that's ever happened to me is not working for him. So, um, so I had a really good attitude about everything that happened. And I knew that I was divinely led and I was listening to my intuition. Um, I was keeping my heart open. I was wanting to help. I was wanting to help from an unbiased place. When I do readings, I really try to keep my own stuff out of it, even though like sometimes spirit will prompt me. They'll be like, you share your story, share what you what you went through. <clears throat> sometimes hearing your own thing that you went through, somebody can really relate to it and they they it really helps them understand their situation better. So but it's all about listening to your intuition and trying to come from a place of um, untaintedness. You know, um, even though I haven't had my twin flame situation work out, I'm not I'm not steering away people from their twin flames. Do you know what I mean? Like some other readers, I suppose, could be like, oh, it never worked out. The twin flame thing is stupid. It's a dumb dynamic. You know, don't go there. It's just painful, you know, and steer everybody away based on their opinion. Um, don't do that. If, you, if you're really looking to be a good reader, you have to be completely unbiased as much as possible. I know we have egos, so that's that can be to a degree. But um, as much as you can, keep your own opinions out of it. You know, don't, I mean, you know what I mean. Keep your opinions out of it and try to see things purely and try to see things um, straightforward. And so I do encourage people to be with their twin flames. And, um, but I'm also open-minded to say, hey, soul flames and soul mates could be even better, you know? So who's to say not? And I study people and I study the people that I help and I study the people that, that I, um, interact with and that I get to know. And through time, I've just discovered more and more and more about those different, um, categories and what options are available for people and um, that type of thing. So your niche will become something that you master. It will become something that you're excellent at. And just keep an open mind for that to change. You know, in the very beginning, I was very adamant. Everybody needed to be with their twin flame. And now I'm not. I think it's a great thing if you can make that work. But if not, then I think other options are fantastic. So, and maybe I'll change that opinion later. I don't think you should be like, um, I know the end answer and that is the answer period and stick to it just out of stubbornness and, and, um, and just not wanting to look bad because you change your mind. You got to be authentic and be real to really make it. So, um, just be yourself. And do what you do best, even if it's weird or quirky or stupid or um, people will look at you weird. I mean, I have people all the time that I tell them they've got a leprechaun or a fairy around them. And um, and I don't care. <laughs> they don't have to listen to me, but they do, you know, because they they know they can feel and they can sense that I have like my own proof I feel solid. I feel confident. When you feel solid and you feel confident, um, other people can kind of lean on that. They can they can use that to build their own sense of confidence. And essentially, we're just placebo. So don't get an ego about being accurate. Don't don't make it about how oh I'm just so great. You know, obviously, don't do that because that's really stupid. <laughs> it's really stupid because it's just not true. You're just as awful as you are awesome. So. 
you know, don't get a big head about it. So, um, in fact, you know, the, there are some people who get all egotistical about it and then they lose their intuition. So I'm just saying the other side, like, deserves and needs respect. Um, so, I uh, guess I'm trying to think of anything else that kind of helped me all along. I guess I network a lot. You know, I talk to a lot of people. I try to help people out. Um, I offer things for free whenever I can. Um, I don't know. Make connections. Pay attention to synchronicities. Pay attention to where you're being led. Keep a very optimistic and high vibe attitude and keep your, keep from, keep yourself from any kind of worrisome thoughts or any kind of stressful thoughts or stressful people or drama or any, any of the sort. And, um, and you will be led by your higher self. Your higher self wants you to have like ultimate fulfillment and happiness in every area of your life. So if you can just stay, stay quiet, stay present, follow your intuition, then you will be led to success. And the success for you may be just being able to do this full time. That's awesome. Or even part time. Just putting it in the mix of what you do. If you're an attorney and you love being an attorney and you do readings on the side, fantastic. If that's what you love. Um, if you want, you know, to be whatever you want to do, whatever you want to be, just vi be visualizing it. Um, you can't step into that if you can't picture you yourself doing it. So, and that actually goes, is true for your true love person too. Like you got to picture being with them so that you can, you can be more comfortable with them in a way. <laughs> You got to use your imagination to, to get comfortable with it. So anyway, I hope this helps. And if you guys have any question, any other questions like that you'd like me to clarify for you, you can um, comment below. And if you like this video and uh, would like me to make some others, let me know like what you'd like me to talk about. Any other questions that you have about my development and what I've been through that helped me get through all this stuff. Let me know. You can always call into the Satori show and ask me for free on my podcast every week by calling 256-291-1191 every Sunday at 6.30 Mountain Time. You'll have to figure out what that is in your own mountain or in your own uh, time zone. Um, and also you can click your bell notifications and subscribe so that you get these videos as soon as they come out and check out my other videos for sure. So have yourselves a beautiful day and I'll talk to you guys later.